Today's passage is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 1 to 4. Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 1 to 4. I pray that as we read through the scripture, we will hear the voice of our living God. Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Amen. Last week, we've looked into the scripture about who Jesus met, focusing on the book of John. He met those who were crying outside of the tomb, those who were still suspicious of what happened. We've read about Jesus who resurrected, and today we would like to focus on what Jesus said after he rose from the dead. Of course, he said many things after resurrection, but we would like to focus on the message of forgiveness. As I said last week, Jesus, who rose again from the dead, he did not peep he did not meet people with malice or with any hard feelings. Of course, he could have met them. He could have met the Pharisees and the scribes, those who tormented him so much. He could have gone to them. He could have punished or judged them. Or he could have gone to the soldiers who hanged him on the cross. He could have blamed them, but he did not do so. When he came back, he was not filled with hostility or rage. But when he died on the cross, he already said that he forgave the people. And so when he was back, he did not have any hostility or anger. According to the Gospel of John, he appears to his disciples who are frightened and lock the doors for fear of the Jewish leaders. And the first words he told to his disciples was, Peace be with you. The disciples betrayed Jesus. They ran away. They denied Jesus. But to those disciples, the first words of Jesus was, Peace be with you. Don't be frightened. Peace be with you. That was his first words. And then he showed them his hands and side and showed that he is alive again. And then he tells his disciples, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Jesus, who lived again, met his disciples and blessed them to have peace. And then he told them that he will be sending the disciples. He will be dispatching the disciples for some mission. That's what he told the disciples. And then he continues to say, and with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. What did Jesus tell to his disciples? Did he tell them where they will be going, what mission it will be? As we've read the scripture, we can see that the first mission of Jesus Christ was that they need to forgive. That was the first mission given to the disciples by Jesus Christ. And to give that ability, Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And then, only if you receive the Holy Spirit, then you have to forgive. That was the mo more important message of Jesus Christ. Probably he knew that they will eventually have to die just like Jesus Christ. So what is left? 
for the disciples was to have the ability to forgive others. Christianity is a religion of forgiveness. Forgiveness, isn't it a mystery? What is forgiveness? How can humans forgive others? Through what mechanism can humans forgive? Can animals forgive? Can beasts forgive? But Jesus commands us to forgive. The scripture continuously encourages us to forgive. And the scripture, the book of Luke, chapter 17, also highlights that we need to forgive. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. So Jesus said that even if they sin against you seven times in a day, you need to forgive them if they come back seven times and say, I repent. And also through Apostle Paul, people receive the words about forgiveness. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. And in the book of Colossians, chapter 3, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Jesus continuously is telling us to forgive others. And the reason why we need to forgive is because Jesus forgave us first. That is why we need to forgive. Who can dare to forgive? Probably many of us, there are many of us who can't forgive others. So then how can we forgive others? We want to forgive, but it's not easy to do so. Jesus has shown us how to forgive, and we can realize one secret about how to forgive. When he died on the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. When Jesus was on the cross, he saw people slandering and lashing, but nevertheless, Jesus asked his Father to forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. At one birthday party, a family has gathered, and a young child went to his grandfather during the party with a piece of cake and smeared cream on his pants. What do you think had happened? What would you do if you were a grandfather? Would you just stand up and scold the child? Embarrass the child? Would you hit the child? Would you just get out of the party? If so, then probably you have Alzheimer's because a true grandfather would just laugh and just clean and then embrace the grandson. Why? Because that child does not know what he is doing, because the child is too young to know what he is doing. Even if it's a big mistake, the grandfather would still forgive and embrace the grandson. It's because that was not intentional and because it was the grandson did not know what he was doing. With that attitude, we can embrace people. When we see people and if they do something wrong and if we know that that is intentional, then we cannot forgive them. If we know that that mistake was intentional, then we cannot forgive those people. But Jesus said to those who were hanging him on the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. 
although it looks like it's intentional, and Jesus probably knew that maybe it was intentional, but still, even if it was intentional, Jesus asked his father to forgive them because that was driven by Satan. He was asking and interceding with his father, telling him to forgive them. How can we forgive? So then think like that. If you want to forgive someone, then think that maybe that was not intentional. Maybe that was just a mistake. If we think in that way, then it will be easier for us to forgive others. So then people might ask, how can we forgive? We would like to forgive, but it's not easy. So then how can we forgive? What is forgiveness? So I would like to ask you, what is forgiveness? Is it about telling others, I forgive you? Is that forgiveness? How can we forgive? According to the book of Isaiah, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. God, when God forgives us, He says that He will no longer remember our sins, that He will blot out our transgressions. It's not that God will keep that data of our sins in His memory. When we repent, He will delete all those sins from His memory. This probably is a fictitious story, but there was one person who has received a special gift from God, and that gift was to be able to see the past, present, and future of a person. So one day, a faithful pastor, he was curious, and he wanted to know whether that person can really see the past. because he had a secret of his past. Although now he was a pastor, he was faithful, and he has repented all his sins, and he believed that he is forgiven, but there was one particular sin that was still troubling his mind. He wanted to know whether that person with this special ability could see through him and see that past. So he met that person and asked, Look at me and tell me if there is any hidden past. Can you see it? So then that person looked at the pastor and said, I cannot see any past sins because the blood of Jesus Christ has blotted out your transgressions. You are clean. I cannot see any past sins. That's what he told him. What is God's forgiveness? It's about com being completely forgotten. He will no longer remember anything. The transgressions are b l o t out. That is God's forgiveness. After the resurrection, Jesus met his disciples, but when he met them, he did not blame them. He did not rebuke them, asking, why did you betray me? Why did you deny me? But rather, when he met his disciples, he asked Peter, do you love me? He did not blame the other disciples for running away, for betraying him. He did not ask them, where were you when I was bearing my cross? What were you doing? Why did you betray me? He did not say so. But when he met his disciples, he said, peace be with you. He forgot everything. He no longer remembered the past. He no longer remembered the past anymore. That is forgiveness. Many times I talk with married couples as I do ministry and because I also have a family, I also get to experience a lot of dynamics of families and married couples. And when I meet newlyweds, I always tell them, don't even start to exchange hurtful words. Don't do that because in the beginning, it might look like, like it won't have any impact. However, if 
during your marriage, those words will come back to you. Probably you've experienced the same or something similar between spouses, between married couples. If someone has done something wrong, you say, I forgive you. Okay, good, let's say you're forgiven and I will not remember so. So it looks like the situation is now done and over with and it looks like the spouse has forgiven. However, one day if the couple fights again, then all those things of the past will come back again. Starting from the first day of their marriage until now, everything will come back to them and they will again be hurt because of those hurtful words. Why? It's because they did not truly forgive each other, because forgiveness is about forgetting, but they did not forget what had happened in the past. That's why they did not forgive each other, and because of that, the, re the relationship is weak. Brothers and sisters, when we forgive, a surprising thing can happen. According to the book called The Christian Theology, written by Alistair McGrath, forgiveness is about restoring a very important relationship that I once broke. Forgiveness is about restoring a very important relationship that I once broke. That is the definition of forgiveness. And he continues to say, through forgiveness, Jesus has restored our relationship with God that was once eternally broken because of our foolishness. Only through forgiveness can our relationship with God be restored. Forgiveness has the power to restore relationships. Forgiveness can restore, recover relationships. The situation can change, and if you forgive, new possibilities can emerge. As we work or we're with our family, sometimes you think that the relationship is too stiff and there are no possibilities to mend those relationships. But once you start to forgive, new possibilities will rise and the relationship can be renewed. Forgiveness has the power to do so. In 2006, in the Pyongyang Presbytery, there was a special worship service about the repentance regarding the expulsion of Pastor Chu ki And I was there to design that special worship. In 1939, the presbytery had expelled Pastor Chugitar because he opposed to shrine worship. But the special service was conducted to reinstate Pastor Chugitar. And at that time, there was a church historian named Professor Kim In Su who gave a lecture on that day. He said that. Our church has a shameful history of having done shrine worship. So that is why we are to be blamed. However, there was a special branch of the church that did not do shrine worship. So from that perspective, that church can be considered to have legitimacy. However, that branch of the church became a small branch in the Korean church history and did not assume a pivotal role in the history of Korean church. Why? It's because they did not have the spirit of forgiveness. They condemned those who did shrine worship and they said they cannot receive those people and they did not forgive them. So they tried to be pure with their faith. However, they were not able to forgive. That is why they were not able to play a critical role in doing the works of God. And that was very impressive for me as well. Nowadays, there are many social movements, activities taking place in the society. People claim justice about peace 
and about righteousness and about realizing peace. Many people make efforts. However, to realize justice, people use anger, fury, to realize peace and justice. However, we can never reach peace and justice through anger and fury. It's only through forgiveness and love that Jesus has shown us to reach those goals. Other than that, we cannot see peace and justice in this world. Being a Christian means nevertheless to be able to forgive regardless of what others think. Because we have been forgiven by Jesus Christ and we forgive ourselves, we can forgive each other within our families, and then we can forgive others in the society, within the church, at our workplaces. That is the attitude of being a true Christian. First, we need to learn how to forgive ourselves because many people do not really have a good relationship with themselves. They have inner conflicts and they fight internally because of those inner conflicts. They do not forgive themselves. Although God has received us and although God has forgiven us the way we are, but still, if I cannot receive myself and accept myself, then isn't it a misery? There are many people who do not forgive their parents. There are parents who do not forgive their children. When I was doing ministry in the U.S., when I talked with many students, many students would tell about their broken relationships with their fathers and with their mothers. There were many students suffering from those broken relationships. Although the parents paid for their tuition, paid everything for them to be well off, still the relationships were broken between father and son, between mother and daughter. But God tells us to forgive our children, to forgive the parents, but there are many people who cannot do so. There are people who hate their husbands, who despise their wives, who despise their relatives, couples hating each other. But once you hate someone, the relationship will be broken and there is no way to restore the relationship. It is only through Jesus Christ that the relationship can be mended and new possibilities can rise. Brothers and sisters, like Jesus has forgiven us, we need to forgive others. A married couple once came to a pastor and said that they are planning to get a divorce, but before doing so, they wanted to talk to the pastor, pastor before making the final decision. They didn't have, of course, not a good relationship, and they were full of hatred. And they were about to tell about all those past wrongdoings of each other. And then they said to the pastor, Pastor, we tried everything not to get a divorce. We did everything that we can. We tried everything that we can. But now we have to get a divorce. So the pastor said, But there is one thing that you did not try. Try forgiving each other. Even if you try to forgive each other and the situation did not get better, then come back. God also has the same approach. He made the world. He created Adam and Eve. And through them, he wanted to be glorified. However, they were kicked out of the mountain of Eden. And they were living a life full of sins. But then he called his people through Abraham and he chose the Israelites. However, they were not able to live the life as chosen ones. 
although he saved them from Egypt, but still the Israelites were rebellious. They did not become the joy of God. And although God gave his commandments to the Israelites, but the Israelites did not become his people. They were not obeying to his words. So, last, finally, what did God do? God sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to the world to save His people and let His Son die on the cross to give that unconditional love to His people. That is how God worked with us. That last relationship that was not mended was mended through Jesus Christ coming to this world, dying on the cross, forgiving us, Through Jesus Christ, that broken relationship was re-established. Brothers and sisters, we are now still celebrating resurrection, 50 days after resurrection. We say that we're taking part in resurrection, that we are sharing and taking part in that ability of resurrection. But what does it mean to take part in the resurrection? I think it's about forgiveness, and we can say that my past is now no longer there, and that we are now renewed through Jesus Christ and by having the ability to forgive. We are being reborn to be able to forgive. What happens when we forgive? Because forgiveness has the ability to make something live again. Anger and death will only bring death. However, forgiveness will make us live. Not only we will live, but the community, our neighbors will live. The relationships will be mended. Families can live again. Because Jesus Christ has forgiven, Peter has become a disciple again, and the disciples were called again. Jesus did not tell his disciples, I forgive you, but he asked to Peter, do you love me? By saying so, he received Peter again. And by saying, feed my lambs, by doing so, he has made Peter his disciple again. When there is forgiveness, then there is peace. The result of forgiveness is peace. And Jesus said, Peace be with you. There is only peace when there is forgiveness. And the book of Colossians says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Brothers and sisters, some people might say, I also want to forgive. I really wanted to forgive, but I couldn't. It's not easy. There are many people who lament because they cannot do so. Let's go back to the book of John. Jesus says, And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus knew that the only way for the disciples to have the ability to forgive is to receive the Holy Spirit first. That is why Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The reason why we are waiting for the Holy Spirit is because we also need to get that ability to forgive others. Now, as we're still celebrating Resurrection, after 50 days, why are we waiting for that day? It's because we want to live a life of forgiveness. And that is why we need to wait for that Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, 
anger and hatred cannot save us, cannot make us happy, nor can it lead us to peace. It's only through forgiveness that we can be with peace. Only through forgiveness can we live. Jesus Christ says, Peace be with you. Let us pray. Father of love, you have sent your one and only Son to be hanged on the cross and to live again to save us. We remember that love and that mission that you have given us. We pray that we can forgive others and that we can establish your heavenly kingdom through forgiveness, just like the disciples, and that we can save our families through forgiveness, save the church and the society through forgiveness. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.